everybody. Welcome back to our show. We're gonna go in line and introduce ourselves and then we're gonna tell you what we're doing today. I'm Mia, I'm a junior. I'm Faith, I'm a sophomore. I'm Rebecca, I'm a junior. I'm Ben, I'm a sophomore. We're all college students at the University of Vermont. And today we're gonna to be talking about social media on campus and how it creates a community or isolates us. Now, it's nice to see you all. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice to see you too. So, my first question for you is, how does social media help you create a community at the UPM campus? Me? Well, I actually, I met my freshman year roommate on Facebook, wow. um, and we're still roommates now, so it obviously turned out really good. And I literally, like, I met her through Facebook. Um, she literally just posted, posted, like, a profile, and I clicked on it and, like, texted her, and then we just texted and became roommates. So I think that's a very unique way that social media has, like, helped me connect with someone on college campus. Wow, that's awesome. I also found my freshman year roommate through Facebook, but not only can you find your roommate there, you can also meet other people before you even come to college off of different social media pages. So you already have connections before coming to school. That's amazing. And what about you? Oh, Any uh, insights? Yeah, I've seen a lot of people really take off with like having clubs with social media mm. followings because they can help you like find friends and also find things that you could be a bit potentially interested in. Like if I see a sick clip by like SSC, I'm like, yo, like I want to go skiing now. And then I go sign up and I have like more people that I know. So I've seen that help. Yeah, I agree. I think you can find a lot of different clubs and information about the clubs off of social media um, that are within the school. And you can find out when the events are for said clubs. And it just gives a lot of good information and awareness in general. Not only clubs, I feel like UVM puts on a lot of events around campus um, and like that's also very accessible and easy to find through social media. I feel like it's a great way for students to get connected with each other. That's awesome. And do you guys think there are any negative impacts of social media on you being a college student? Um, I think that maybe, for example, like when you're a freshman and you feel kind of alone and you see these people who are also in college with you going out every night and like they're huge groups of friends and you're like, I haven't really figured that out yet. Um, it can make you feel super isolated and like you don't know what you're doing at college yet. Sure. I definitely think, especially in college, because there are so many people, you can find it so easy to compare yourself to others. Um, like you said, I know, like, when I first came to college, like, as a freshman, literally second week of school, I'd see people posting with, like, 15 other people, and I would be like, there's no way. You already have a group of 15 friends. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Any last thoughts before we wrap it up? Um, yeah, I was just going to say, like, kind of social media amplifies the FOMO a lot because it's mm. like there's always something that you can be doing and there's always something that you can be missing. Um, and I found that, like, sometimes you just got to, like, turn it off because otherwise it'll feel bad about, like, oh, I missed out on, like, going to Bolton or something. So true. Thank you guys so much for being here and sharing your experiences with social media as college students. Awesome. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our talk show called Students Speak. I'm your host, Emma, and today we're asking students questions, and they're going to speak. We're here with Emily, Ella, and Sam. And to start off, Emily, or Ella, from your perspective, how would you define free speech? Um, it's kind of twofold. In a very literal sense of the word, it's saying whatever you want, whenever you want, and however like you feel. Um, but in a more practical sense, there are certain things that society has agreed are taboo to talk about at certain times or in front of certain audiences or you have the potential to offend a lot of people so freedom of speech only goes so far depending on who you are and how you want to interact with the world um, so although the literal sense of it is saying what you want I think that society has kind of created our own rules around that um, and it's not actually as free as we sort of make it out to be because even if you're allowed to doesn't mean that society is going to accept that Absolutely. All right, shifting gears, Sam, how does the conversation around free speech change in the context of social media? Um, I think kind of to add on to the point just earlier now, on social media, 
you can, in a sense, post anything, say anything, but when it's something hateful or somebody is saying something bigoted or it's just something that you don't want to see on your feed, I feel like that takes off a lot quicker than like just good stuff as well. So there's kind of this conversation about an algorithm on social media that seems to draw attention to just clicks and views. So it seems like hateful things that may technically be free speech because you can say anything feels like it should be monitored and maybe monitored better by the social media platforms that allow you to post anything. Absolutely. Um, and finally, Emily, what do you think that the benefits or the risks of censorship of free speech are, and who do you think is accountable for it? So this is definitely a tricky one because, of course, hate speech is horrible and I definitely don't think it should be promoted or allowed in any way. But then we sort of get to a conversation about censorship and what that could mean depending on who the person censoring is. Because obviously I do think there should be consequences for hate speech or speech that incites violence because that's not just speech, it's creating something bigger and more violent than the words itself. Um, but the issue comes around when we allow too much censorship because then we're allowing the government or corporations to choose what is right or wrong to say and that can get really risky when we step into that. Great. Thank you all for your responses. That is all um, and thanks for watching and we'll see you next week. Hi, my name is Alani. I'm S my name is Siraj. My name is Ella. And I'm Quinn. And today we are going to be talking about how certain social media accounts um, that a lot of UVM students follow can bring them together. We're going to be focusing on the Instagram account UVM Finder, Hottie, Hottie Finder, sorry. Do you want to tell them what that is? Yes, yeah, so it's basically an account where people have um, submissions of um, descriptions of people in a funny way, like, um, and we're going to talk about that in our talk show soon. Yeah, the Instagram page itself has over 4,000 followers and it's anonymously ran and it's for the student body to be able to click a form and fill out someone that maybe they thought was cute and they don't know their names. I have two UVM students here and they have picked some posts that they thought were rather funny to read to you guys today. All right, so I guess I'll just go first. Um, this post was from September 13th of this year and it reads, to the deeply unsettling man with no eyebrows <laughs> and no sideburns who's always carrying around a pot of cereal. Hey, cutie. <laughs> um, yeah, so this could sort of be perceived two ways. I mean, like one, like that could be like a little offensive, I guess, for calling him out with like saying he has no eyebrows or sideburns. <laughs> but I guess in a way you could also take that as a compliment that somebody like picked you out of the crowd to like sort of notice you. And I mean, a lot of people are seeing this post, so I don't know, I feel like personally for me, any attention is sort of like good attention. It's better than nothing, so yeah. Good to be recognized for your pot of cereal. <laughs> uh, I chose one from September 9th of this year, and it says, to the guy that bit me at Ree Ross last night, um, do you have rabies? <laughs> um, and this kind of highlights maybe the negative side of Hottie Finder, where you could get called out for something embarrassing that you did, um, but it also like provides entertainment for like the people reading the post. We all thought this was really funny, and everyone could get a good laugh out of getting bit at Ree Ross. <laughs> Um, has anybody here ever gotten one something about them? No. Some vague ones, like, <laughs> like, is it me? Yeah. Type of thing. Like, and like, yeah, it's that's me. Um, but yeah, it's it's hard to tell. Like, sometimes they're really vague. Sometimes they're really specific too. Um, but yeah, haven't got called out by name. And I believe we are doing a section on how to submit a UVM hottie finder. Just so um, everybody knows how to yeah, do it in yeah. case you guys want to send one in about one of us, we can show you how to do it. So, so. We, <laughs> we have someone in mind. 
Yes, we do in oh. fact someone <laughs> we do in fact have someone in mind. Um, he has a really beautiful minivan. Beautiful minivan. W along with beautiful sideburns. They kind of um, hook in here. His, he mm -hmm. has upside down sunglasses. Yeah. His blue hat. Mm -hmm. Oh, we've got a bandana on. Yeah, we saw him outside of the theater today, <laughs> briefly. Um, and we are gonna go on the Instagram and click on the link in the bio and submit this. Hopefully you can find this person because we want to find them. So yeah. <laughs> University of Vermont bringing secret admirer to a whole new level. This is a fictional scenario. Hey Miranda, for your next assignment, I need you to look into the public record for Miles Jewell. <laughs> okay, um, unfortunately I've never heard of a public record. I probably shouldn't be telling you that because you're my editor and I guess that makes me maybe unqualified for this position as um, a news writer, but man, conveniently today I'm here at CCTV Burlington where I am with two wonderful experts on public records. Hi there, how can I help you? Hi, I have so many questions for you. That's great. Um, my first question, so for this next um, article that I'm writing about this mysterious figure, Miles Jewell, never heard of him. Um, I need to know, what is a public record? It can be really anything. Um, anything that involves government workers or government dollars. Um, so it's very broad. Okay, um, that helps narrow this down a little bit. Um, I guess my next question is, how do I obtain somebody's public record? Well, the Freedom of Information Act um, provided the public with the right to request access to records from any federal agency. Typically, you can just reach out to the agency and tell them what information you need. Okay, um, that also helps me narrow this down. Um, who can these access, like, who can these records be accessed by and under what circumstances? Um, <laughs> we switch numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were experts. <laughs> we're in training, so um, be forgiving. Um, in Vermont. Are, Oh, well, are you Googling this right now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm new, I'm new. <laughs> in Vermont, agencies have three days to respond to a public records request. Okay. Um, can anybody access them, or can I access them? Yeah, access them? anybody like, can access them. Okay. Um, you, some things are harder to get, but for okay. the most part, anyone can put in a public records request. Okay, uh, where are these records kept? Is it an archive? Is it like physical, digital? Like where do these records exist? So public records actually exist in all shapes and sizes. Some are okay. digital and some are only accessible in person. Okay, uh, that helps me a little bit. Um, now, I have a really important question. What are my rights if somebody requests a public record on me? like Miles in this situation, what would his rights be? It kind of varies by state, but for the most part, um, you have the right to um, access any agency records about yourself. Um, so anything that you're in the subject of, there are a few exceptions. So if you are in an active investigation, that might get a little tricky, or military things get tricky. Um, but And some organizations also will block out certain things like credit card numbers or your social security numbers. So kind of case by case basis, but um, you can usually access them for yourself. Okay. That's all really wonderful information. Thank you so much for sharing this with me today. I now feel thoroughly ready to investigate Miles Jewell. <laughs> Hi folks, welcome back to Channel 3 News. Um, that we are all UVM students. My name is Gwen. My name's Tim. And I'm Lauren, and today we're gonna be reporting on some breaking news that we saw in the news cycle today. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you guys, but I saw that Bernie Sanders just got engaged to Katy Perry, and that they're starting a nonprofit down here in Burlington. That's crazy. Yeah. That's a, that's a real firework. Yeah, I know, honest <laughs> to God. And they're um, dealing a lot with like plastic bags drifting through the wind. Wow. That's, that's lyrical. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wanting to start again for the most part. That's awesome. Cool. Speaking of love, I heard that love letters came out between Trump and Putin. Whoa. I'm really confused about that. I saw that, that too, Did yeah, you? that was all over my Instagram okay. feed. Okay, yeah. That's just, radical. Like, weird, right? I wouldn't yeah. have thought. What about, did you hear anything? Yeah, my, my news was going pretty wild today. Um, yeah, we, there was a champ sighting last week, and then also there was 
something about bird bikes, how uh, you can actually take them underwater. So me and a couple of my buddies, I think, are going to go explore, look for Champ. That's awesome. Yeah. I think I saw a sign-up sheet for that. Where really? you, yeah, you can the just... Davis Center? Yeah, in the Davis Center. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can just right go. Next, yeah, right next to the condoms, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Right there? Yeah, yeah, that's wild. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. insane. Oh, my God, wait, I think oh. our producer also has some more breaking news. Whoa. You know... I heard that aliens are taking over the Earth. No, you didn't. Wow. Are you serious? Are you being serious? No, I'm not serious. You need to fact check your information. Uh, oh. Wait, so did you guys fact check any of your information? No. No. Uh, me either. Usually I just blab on. I think I just spread fictional news. Yeah. Me too. Maybe we should start fact checking our stuff. I think so. I heard it's really important. Important that you're supposed to be getting stuff from reliable sources. Maybe we should. I feel like we'd get lie. more clicks though if we just that's kept doing true. what we're doing. That's yeah. true. Good point. It makes more money. Yeah. I don't know. That's just a th just a thought. Daily Mail isn't necessarily a good news source Are you as I thought it was. Serious? Yeah. How are we supposed to know stuff like that? I don't know. Yeah, we really got to figure out a better way to yeah. find our information. Well, we need some more funding, guys. Yeah. Yes. So, Please send us money. So if you guys have any way to let us know how we can figure out how to stop getting misinformed, please do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>